we were 10,000 people that were marched from these different camps together because the Russians were coming. They didn't want us to be liberated. And, and, and if you, it was the worst winter, and a lot of people had the shoes that they gave you because they took all our shoes away. They gave us some stupid looking shoes. And then if you, if you fell down, they shot you. They shot you. And I was among the survivors, 500. Don't ask me how. Folks, that's Martin Greenfield. He's called America's last great tailor. He's an Auschwitz survivor. He's describing the Nazi death march of 1941, which he also survived. And he, very important, he's put it down in a brand new book, a bestseller, Measure of a Man, from Auschwitz survivor to President's tailor. He has been tailored to the stars, tailored to four presidents, U.S. presidents, and I'm so honored to have him sitting here in studio. Thank you for coming Thank you in, sir. Much. I'm glad you invited me. Oh, no, I want to share my story with you. I, I just wish we had a, an hour for, to, to hear from you. But, um, uh, you know, you, you, you were separated from your family. You know what struck me right off the bat? What, what your father told you and what, what, what you've lived by, the creed that you've lived by, what he told you the last time you saw him. The last time my father sat me down in Auschwitz when we were tattooed together, he said to me, you and I will survive, but you and I cannot survive together. We suffer for each other. But he didn't call me Martin, he told me Maximilian, but that was my name. And he said to me, you are disciplined, you are strong, and you wouldn't suffer with me and I wouldn't suffer for you. Fathers and son will never survive together in this place. So I give you this destruction. I will meet you after, I guarantee you. I'll survive, you'll survive, because you're strong. I educated you to be disciplined. You gotta follow every step and every day think, survive, survive, survive. But if you survive and I don't survive, this is what I want you to do. Do not honor us by crying honor us by living and carrying on the future. And, and I'm telling you, every day of your life, you should go on living, and you could think about us, but you honor us by become somebody and continue your life in our honor. And you... With God's help. I, you know, as, as the father of a 15-year-old boy, I, I, I can't help but tear up yeah. hearing, hearing so, that. So I just could tell you that I survived through a lot of bad things, but could I say that it was the things that I did always? It's true. I always did everything but they asked me discipline. But I was beaten, I was skinned, I was putting change to different jobs. But you know, they put me in a tailor shop. Well, you know about the show. I couldn't sew. A 15 year old boy, I never saw nothing. I told the Jewish tailor, I can sew. He said, I'll give you a different job. I told a shirt to, to, to scrub. You could do that, so I'll show you how. They said, scrub the shirt, the rib. That shirt rib. So I said, so what's the difference? I didn't rip it, the brush ripped it. He says, it's different. You know, here there is Nazis. Because I didn't know then yet about Gestapo. There's right, that there. Right. But tomorrow he's come over the shirt. They act a little different with those Jews. So he came and, and he sh sh showed them the shirt that had ripped the collar. Who ripped the collar? He goes, right away he beats me up and throws the shirt. Once he threw the shirt, he walked out. He didn't shoot me, so I was alive. And I said, can you show me how no. to make a collar? So he helped me. I said, you know what? I'm going to wear a shirt. Nobody has a shirt. I said, you can wear a shirt. Why would you want to wear a shirt? Nobody. Because it's different, you know, because I look different. 
and I want to see the capo if he's going to stop me. I'm yes. going to walk around. I was stuck. I ripped another shirt, I ripped, and they threw me out. Then they put me to collect the clothes in Quito, and I had to smell the smoke. It could have been my parents burning, my brother. They could have been burning, and I smelled. Why could I do nothing? But, but you survived. But I survived. You survived, and you, your father, for all these many years, looking down on you, could not have imagined what a great success you would yeah. become, and you still are as you sit here with me. What, 86? <laughs> God bless this, you. This is, this is what, what you should meet my family, my two brothers, my two sons, my extension of my life, my grandkids, my grandson, to start, if one Jew stays alive, not only do I become rich, me, I help other people. All right, measure of a man, folks. You're going to cry, but you're going to smile, which is what I'm doing right now. Martin Greenfield, uh, measure of a man from Auschwitz survivor to President's Taylor. We haven't even touched on it. He dresses stars, movie stars, athletes, presidents of the United States, and look at him, dressed impeccably as he sits here putting me to shame today. Um, God bless you, sir. I'm Thank sorry you. it's so Thank short. Thank you for what having an honor. me. What an honor. <laughs> what an honor. All right, uh, get, get this book. Um, we'll be back, uh, ladies and gentlemen, with uh, a lot more. Uh, but first, a tax advisor, uh, Michael Daskal, on ways to lower estate taxes. Death and taxes are the only two certainties in life. You can't avoid death, but it's worth exploring how to lower your estate taxes so you can limit Uncle Sam's piece of the pie. If you've been successful enough to accumulate a substantial amount of assets, you can lower or eliminate your estate taxes. There's a lot of ways to do it. It requires sophisticated planning. You have to coordinate with your CPA and your legal advisor, but effectively there are ways to get assets out of your estate at substantial discounts and avoid paying millions of dollars down the road. The benefits and the detriments of the various techniques vary depending on the individual circumstances of the persons using them. It's important to huddle with your financial advisors and your attorney to figure out the best plan for you, whether that includes gifting, transferring your money, and or creating a trust. I'm Hanno Stopchek. Get more money news at Newsmax.com.